Let me share with you my final thoughts from the interview with Chris Martin. If you're listening just to the final thoughts on Instagram, Chris is the owner of two academies called Nova Gyms in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The main reason why he was interviewed on a podcast was not because of his business, but for the intention of bringing awareness to the jiu-jitsu community about a very delicate and rare topic, strokes from chokes, since in 2017, he suffered a massive brain stroke from a choke. Chris stated, quote, while I still believe what I teach to my students, young and old, that jiu-jitsu promotes longevity and all around more balanced and focused approach to life, I also believe that it is now my duty to speak an additional truth to these same students, that there are also inherent risks associated with the practice of jiu-jitsu that is now just beginning to surface. These risks relate to the danger associated with neck manipulation. All students, coaches, and parents like myself, I have two daughters practicing the art, need to all be aware of these potential hardness immediately, unquote. As you already know, if you have been listening to the podcast for a while, I like to research the main topic of the interview, learn more about it, and share with you the content. Today, I'll be copying and pasting a lot of his statements that he has published on his medium.com slash at bizjitsu, B-I-Z-J-I-T-S-U, a page dedicated to this matter. Imagine you're training at your school and suddenly the right part of your body is paralyzed and you cannot even speak. You try to sit and you can't. How scary would it be? That is what happened with Chris. He said, quote, what happened to me was super rare. It's called carotid artery dissection. I didn't know, but I had a tear in one of my arteries and I had a blood clot. During practice, I was put in a choke that combined with other issues gave me a stroke. I was instantly paralyzed. I couldn't talk. I couldn't even remember my kids' names, unquote. He explains the whole experience during the interview. If you didn't have a chance to listen, check out the BJJ Mental Coach podcast.com. Now, almost fully recovered, as a healthy 40-year-old athlete with no pre-existing conditions, he wants to bring awareness to the BJJ community so they know the dangers of the sport. Since Chris started to be vocal about this issue, a few practitioners who had similar accidents reach out to him, providing further proof that these types of accidents might be more common than any of us think. According to the article released in the Journal of Cerebrovascular and Endovascular Neurosurgery, only 2% of all strokes are from carotid artery dissection, and chokes have a strong correlation to this issue. Dissection is the leading cause of stroke patients under the age of 45. Arterial dissection is a potentially devastating and underrecognized problem in young and healthy jiu-jitsu practitioners. That is why he started this awareness campaign. Chris stated on his page, quote, One of my carotid arteries was torn and clotted before walking onto the mat for jiu-jitsu practice in August 2017. How long was it torn? We're not sure. The doctor says he thinks it was a couple weeks before the stroke. After practice, we were sparring and a particular north-south choke suddenly left me lying on the mat. I wasn't able to move my right side and I wasn't able to speak. A clot had been sitting on my carotid artery on my left side for some time trying to repair my torn artery. When my partner put me in the choke, it caused the clot to dislodge and fly up to the brain. In other words, Dr. Binder confirmed the choke caused the stroke, but my good health provided a swift recovery. I walked out of the hospital three days later, unquote. He mentioned that a few days before the accident, he felt discomfort under his jaw like he had strep throat, but the discomfort was only on the left side of his mouth. He felt pressure in his neck and couldn't tell if it was a sore muscle or a slight illness like allergies. The great news is that the people he has interviewed so far have been making incredible progress. I don't have much to share with you on this topic. I'm not a doctor and neither has experienced anything close to it. If you'd like to learn more about this issue, the best thing is for you to listen to Chris' interview and research more online. You can also check out Grappling Central Podcast and the BJJ Brick Podcast. Both of these podcasts interview Chris, and also I was a guest on these podcasts a few years back. They do a great job, so check it out when you have a chance. The message here is simple. Awareness. 
even though the actual risk of any of this to happen is relatively low, Chris is absolutely right for the instructors and practitioners to raise their awareness about this specific issue. And safety comes first to whatever type of submissions people are applying. In your next training session, tap quick, tap often, and always do your best to keep you and your training partners safe.